with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. I'm really excited today. We're going to talk about the documentary She, and I've got with me directors Jason Greer, Vanessa Ciccarelli, and author, writer, Amy Baker. So welcome, everyone. Hi. Hey. Thank you. Hi. Did I get that right? I get everybody's name right? Which part? Uh, the names? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hopefully I wouldn't <laughs> Most people don't names. get my name right, but you did. Well, you know, I struggle with names. So I try to practice ahead of time. So I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to take a stab at it. So, all right, that's, that's pretty good. Although listeners of the, of the podcast, they know I struggle. With names. <laughs> so they usually give me a pass. So that's, I'm, I'm pleased. That's a, We're off to a, a good, a good start. Well, I will but, say, I think you're the first one who got Vanessa's. So <laughs> I'm definitely the first one who got it without asking. Yeah. There's so, a, yes. there's something to be said for prepping ahead of time. Mm -hmm. that I, is learned, true. I learned that. Do not wing it. That never goes well. No. no. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys so much for, for coming on the, the show. And let's start this way. Tell me a little, let's, let's talk about she a little bit, but tell me what what is she about? Where did the idea come from? You know, what's the, what's the film, the documentary uh, subject matter? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> I could have called on somebody, but I thought that'd be more entertaining. It's okay. It's, it's usually just... she makes me start, so. Right, right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and say what it is, and then that'll go right to Amy. I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. So um, she is about Amy and her her book that she wrote called Doe. And Doe is a collection of poetry um, and it's about missing and unidentified women. And um, it so the poem is the book is divided into two halves, missing women and unidentified women. And um, so through she, we kind of like take a little look at eight of those poems and we talk about the cases that inspired them yeah. and then we we talk a little bit about like some of the stats with missing women and how um prevalent that is in our country and then about the amount of unidentified women as well um and just kind of cover because some of it so so it started because jason wanted to try um making a documentary and he wasn't sure what he wanted to do it on um and we were kind of just at the beginning phase of talking about that at the same time that um, Amy's book I, uh, came to my attention. I think it wasn't long after it came out actually, right, Amy? Um, uh, yeah, I think. Probably, I think short, I- Shortly thereafter. Yeah. I think I ordered it pretty soon after I heard about it. Um, and I was reading it and it was just like, we all know that women go missing. We all know that these things happen, yes. but I just, I don't think I was aware of like actually spending any time with those women and spending any time trying to think about like how much, how many ways this can happen and how often it happens. Um, and the book really brought that to my attention. So while he was talking about like what we should be doing, I'm like, this, this is what you were deciding what you should be doing. Right. So, um, <laughs> and then he, he went ahead and read it too and completely agreed that like the work that Amy is doing through the poetry is something that is, like it needs to get out there. We need to like other people need to be aware of what's happening here. Um, so that's that's how we got started. And well, then I, I love the fact that the it's shining a light on something that make you know a lot of us we know that this right. stuff happens, but you don't think too much about it. So this kind of brings it to the forefront and forces you to kind of deal with something that's not real comfortable but so important. So I, I love that. Right. I love that. But it's, it's, this is the first time I've had a lot of people on with documentaries. It's the first time I've ever heard of a documentary based on a book of poetry, which I thought right. was really, I, I think that's so neat. So it, for me, 
it caused me to go back and read so, through some of the poetry. And, and Amy, you do such a good job. You know, poetry, if it's done right, I think brings a lot of emotion. And, and yours does that, but it also highlights some of these stories. So I, I think, Vanessa and Jason, you know, I think that's probably what caught you and one, made you want to do the documentary. But talk a little bit, you know, about that. Is, is that what grasped you? Because that is a little different to, to do a documentary based on poems. Right. It, that's what grasped us. I think it was part of the part of it with Amy's poetry also is we don't talk about she, she doesn't talk about, and now in our film, we don't either, um, the men or, or people committing these crimes. We talk about the victims. Amy's, Amy um, had a way with the poetry of letting us like get to know some of these victims. And I think most of the time when we watch true crime, we're actually learning more about the killer or, or the person That's who right. was putting the violence out and not so much thinking about the victim. And I think when we do it this way and we go from the victim side, it kind of makes us more aware of the horrible things that are happening. Yeah. Um, more aware yes. of how it's like unfair and how, um, and, and then when we get into it, like just how, how much gets ignored, I guess, like how much, how um, unimportant some of these women are made to be like once. I, I like the fact that a lot of times with documentary, you know, good or bad, it, um, we focus on the bad person, you know, or the killer or the abductor, or what, whatever it is, and their motivations, because that might be what sells a documentary or a show. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think that's a good way to do it, because you do, you kind of undermine the victims. And I think with this, you're really shining a light on the victims and reducing if that makes sense, that role of that bad person that's involved. Right. And, and I like that part of it. That, that to me really attracts me to the project. And that's really, uh, that was really the goal of Amy's book. It was really the goal of the documentary itself. And it was one of the main obstacles that we, we came yeah. across as we did this. We, we told people what we were doing and, and they really said the same thing. Oh, if you put the serial killers in there, I could sell this. If you put, right. put some bigger names in there, I could, I could probably get this out right. to a bigger market which was the exact opposite of, of what we were trying to do. Um, so, so between that and then trying to make a movie about poetry, it was, <laughs> it was challenging at times, yes. like, you know, but I think we feel like it, it kind of came together in a way that um, audiences can feel both, you know, they can feel like, yeah, yeah Amy's words yes. and then also feel for the, for these women. Yeah. I, I think that's terrific. Amy, talk a little bit about, you know, what inspired you to, to start writing this book of poetry? I mean, there has to be easier subjects to write poetry about. Right. I, <laughs> certainly. Like, I wish, I wish I could just be a nature poet. Like, that would just be like, so much better. <laughs> um, but, I, and to sort of begin with, like, I, I was not trained in writing poetry. Like I went to grad school specifically for fiction writing. So I actually, writing Doe taught me how to write poetry. So right. I was learning about it through the process of creating. Um, but it, it's really because I was, I was sitting in, in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, and there was a, a news article about an unidentified woman. Right. And um, and hearing her story and what happened to her. And I was just overwhelmed by the feeling that I, I hadn't heard that story, that I'd been living there for years and living in a space where I had not heard her story. And how is it possible that like something had happened to another woman where I was living and I was unaware. So I, I started diving into what happened to her and, um, through that just discovered just you know story after story of women whose names i'd not not heard whose stories i'd not heard um and and sort of that overwhelming feeling like i wanted to i wanted to do something to sort of yeah. speak out against that yeah I, I think it's 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 very um commendable 
that that you would do that, but it it boggles my mind that you could sit down and and especially without poetry training, you know, you didn't kind of learn that to actually put the pen to paper. I think that would be difficult. Was it difficult or once you started writing, did it just kind of flow? I, I mean, like the first batch of poems, like they, I wrote them so quickly and was like, I like it just felt like the project in this moment, like fully arrived for me. And so I wrote like the first um, probably about six or seven poems, like within a matter of weeks. And wow. like, I thought that was the trajectory for the rest of um, the writing of it, but that's not, that's not how it turned out. Um, <laughs> but, but it, this work and doing that work, it just felt like, oh, like I had found some purpose there, right? Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's so great. What was it like when Jason and Vanessa reached out to you and said, hey, we, we'd like to make this into something you know, besides a book. They're like going to laugh because I say this all the time. Like I avoided them for months. Like <laughs> she did. Yeah. Like they're like messaging me. Like, like, I think that I saw them one time at the library and I would like hid behind the stacks. Cause I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I get that see. because you get like when you're approached sometimes you it just automatically, I think we think, oh no. This, this isn't good. This is somebody wanting something from me. It's not good. So what, what made you finally kind of, kind of take the lead? Well, like one, Jason is very persistent. So <laughs> it's like, he did not stop asking. And so finally it was like, okay, we'll, we'll sit down and talk about it. Um, but it just very much felt like, you know, there are not documentaries about poets. Like this was not on, I say it's like not been on my writer bingo card. Right. Like, having a documentary made um but then I, I ultimately started thinking like okay so like you know poetry but books of poetry can go so far there's a, a readership for them it's not it's not huge um but if I'm going to be doing this like sort of work like what else then does Doe become like how else can we reframe this and take this into something else so ultimately that led me to to finally committing to sitting down with them yeah. Yeah. So, so Jason, what, you know, what was that like when, once she says, okay, I'm interested, then are you like, well, okay, we're ready. We already know what the first step is or, or then were you like, no. well, now we got to figure it out. <laughs> no, yeah, we had to figure it out. I mean, this was, we've been in, we've been in photography and video production for years, but uh, like documentary and filmmaking was not, was very new to us. Um, no, we had an idea of, of look and and technical ability of how to do it um sure. but really it didn't we finally we met with amy we kind of came up with a plan of what we were going to talk about um and when she came in in and we started recording that day it really the whole documentary kind of snowballed from that day and right. from, from the stories and from the way amy was explaining things and it really you know we thought it would be a small 20 minute documentary um and then you know we we recorded for a day or uh, you know of all of these things and it was just so much information that we knew we had to do more with it so from from that initial that initial filming um it kind of snowballed into the, the film that it is now yeah so any unexpected challenges along the way or did it go pretty smooth i don't know if there's any unexpected challenges um there was a lot of ideas based off of it a lot of documentaries have a lot of people a lot of moving parts uh, we didn't really have that we had we had amy um and then we had poetry and then we had facts about these cases so we really wanted to kind of develop a way to expand that and that's kind of where we came up with the idea of getting somebody else to read the poems and then we got another voice to to bring in the actual facts of the cases. So it kind of made made the film a little bit more dynamic. Um, it gave us a little bit more. Um, it was kind of inspired from. So Amy also, aside from poetry, she writes these um, she writes essays. But some of the essays are these braided pieces where she has you sometimes you have like three three stories going at once. 
So after reading one of her stories that was like that, I kind of had the idea of having three voices. So the voice of Amy, the voice of the facts, which was Kate Mulgrew, and then the voice of the poetry, which was Raven Goodwin. And then for one of the poems, we had Coco Jones. So like we wanted these three and we wanted different women's voices and um, just having those like, so that throughout the film, it can alternate between these three pieces, kind of the way her her braided essays work. I, I love the fact that it, it's almost like this was meant to be, you know, you you read the poetry. OK, we you know, I, we want to do this. We just came up with this idea that we wanted to do a documentary. Here's this poetry that works. And now you're reading her Amy's other work and you're taking ideas from that to put into the doc. I, I love that. It just seems like this whole project was just kind of meant to happen. Yeah, it all just came kind of together. We wanted to keep everything as um, pretty and feminine as possible just to kind of like honor these women as well. So like we tried to get really um, pretty visuals as we went through and keep everything kind of true to to that, to honoring the woman and then keep everything very true to Amy, her style and what she stands for as a person. Yeah. So it was... Uh, like we had a lot of really good inspiration to go on. Yeah, I, I think that's terrific. I'm kind of nerdy. So when you say Kate Mulgrew, you know, I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, she's got such a, I think, such a recognizable voice. I mean, she did does. that go into who you chose to, to do that part of the reading? Yeah, so the the for the Kate's part, she reads most of the, the facts, the actual yes. case notes and we kind of wanted kind of like a, a motherly voice to kind of you know umbrella yeah. narrate the entire piece um and then we have we have amy's part and then we wanted another another voice uh for the poetry uh itself like a little youthful and um so it's just we have like that balance of women at different stages sure. and with kate like she's reading the facts but she's like she's able to do that with emotion because she's such you know she's she's a pro she knows what she's yeah. doing so it's just like instead of just having anyone reading through these facts, we have her actually, like you can feel, you can feel the different parts of what she's speaking about when she's, when she's saying, cause some of the facts yes. are, they're, they're, they're difficult. So sure. yeah. 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 I mean, we, we were able to zoom in. <laughs> Was it zoom? I don't we know. We zoomed, we zoomed in on the recording <laughs> session with, with um, Kate and it's just, like she kept on, she like, she would read a section. She'd be like, is that okay? And I was like, she's like, do you want me to change anything? We're all just like starstruck. And like, she has, <laughs> she has like such control. Like she did it like, you know, one take or she would, if there was like one section, she was like, let me do that again. And I was like, I thought it was perfect, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I know she has such a presence. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was the perfect addition to this. So yeah. And, and she's just like master at what she does. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's really good. Can you talk a little bit about the the soundtrack? Because I know a lot of a lot of documentaries, I think that's where they kind of miss is they don't blend in um, a soundtrack that can kind of bring out some emotion with that. And it sounds like you guys really took some time to do that. So talk a little bit about that. We were we were very lucky. We worked with two different artists, uh, Stephanie Quayle who yep. wrote and performed the the intro song for us um and she actually we actually sent her Amy's poems and and her and Alex Klein read the poems and used that as inspiration and wrote that song specifically specifically for the she's film she's got a lovely voice oh yeah. it's stunning yeah. yeah yeah um and then then the actual film score through the rest of it was Jackie Lee McLean um who who scored the rest of it for us and same type of thing. It was, she actually watched the film. She watched it as she went and wrote the pieces like as she was watching it. So she was really feeling the emotion and that was that was on the screen and doing it. So there's, it was, everything was really custom made for. for Is that usual screen. for, for a, a musician to actually watch the film and create the music that way? Because usually I think when films are made, you just kind of go and try to find music that sort of fits. Right, right. And no, I she was really like excited to help and and really wanted to just make each um each part feel like like what was happening. So it just it made such a difference um 
especially through the the poetry parts of it. And uh, no, so we were just lucky. We're just yeah. <laughs> a I, great I think team. I think that's that's terrific. Did it, did I read that this work, your your work on this and stuff, has kind of led to some of these women being identified? So no, um, but. So some of the women in the book have since been identified since I wrote it. Right. Um, and so that is, you know, largely through like volunteer efforts through other organizations that we're not connected with, but we support. So okay. Okay. one of them is, um, one of them's the DNA Doe Project, which is a volunteer organization who's using genetic genealogy to, to make these, these matches happen. Um, so we, we always give them a huge shout out because like some of these stories are stories that like, I just, I just like never thought that they, they would be solved. Right. So it's like cases that are 30, 40 years old. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's amazing. What's the, you know, what kind of feedback are you getting, you know, on your book, on the documentary? I'm assuming that there's some that have, have seen this now, you know, what kind of, kind of feedback are you getting? you know, maybe from, from families who have been through some of this, you know, people like me that, that are just saying, oh, this is something we should really be interested in. And then just, you know, everyone else. Amy, you want to, you want to start? I, I mean, you know, read Joe, you know, I, cause I've been carrying Joe around for, for quite a while. Right. Yeah. So um, like, you know, my, my public readings are, are always very emotional. Um, there, there are inevitably people who approach me after a reading, um, and some some women that I've I've sat with for quite a while who have experienced violence or have had had some things happen to them. Um, so that has always been a, a moving experience. So I was yeah. prepared for for that. Like I I've known that that kind of response will will happen um but now jason and vanessa are are also like experiencing these types of conversations yeah so i guess one of the the main things that i think kind of makes us happy is after after the film some of the people especially when we did our our actual showings locally um stayed behind to talk to us a little bit and um and i think like we, we all women all know that other women go missing it's i think it's something that we we feel and we think about every single day um right. things that can happen to us and i don't think men often think about it and so the women were coming up and saying thank you for making a beautiful film thank you for bringing the awareness out but the men were coming up and saying wow that was dark that was that was hard to watch that was uncomfortable um and i think some of them were just like now I know why my wife does this when she jogs alone, or now I know like what I should be talking to my daughter about before she goes off to college or like it, it just, I think it really opened their eyes and they, they are seeing um, what their wives and daughters are going through in a different way. Like, I mean, that has to be a positive, right? I is. mean, I mean, you're, you're bringing that awareness and you're right as, as males, I think a lot of times we don't think about situations as dangerous where where a female in the same situation jogging is a good example where you might have to be really careful you maybe can't you know be as involved with your headset or whatever you've got going on right. you've got to be aware of your surroundings and it's just a completely different mindset and I think anything that can kind of bridge that gap to where we're understanding and maybe bringing that awareness where maybe that, maybe it helps, maybe it makes it a little safer for some people. That has to be a good thing. Right, right. And I think um, like just even our, we have a 15 year old son and he watched it and he's like, I think this should be mandatory for all young men to watch just so we know to like watch out for our sisters and our friends that are female and just be more aware and kind of just like, I think as women, we watch out for each other, but it's nice to think about men maybe watching out too and, and yeah. you know, kind of having that. Yeah, that. I, I love that part. Amy, I know you're a, a professor. <laughs> Any plans to show this in class? <laughs> it's awkward. Like, I always like think it's like awkward to like talk to my students about like 
what I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like my particular group of students is only slightly aware of what I do. Like, yeah. <laughs> like sometimes like one of them will like Google me and they'll be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're we're hoping to bring um, she to some universities um, to have like. Well, that's kind of my thought. It seems like yeah. that that age, that college age, would be it'd be beneficial to them. To, right. To I mean, watch. Because there's like these big, big sort of questions. I feel like we need to start, you know, circling around and, and talking about like how like what is true crime and like what is ethical true crime storytelling and how do we make this more about about victims right um how do we we frame like what happens to women and why do some women do we talk about and some women we don't and let's let's discuss that and unpack that right so that that's like an age where we can start having those conversations and make like meaningful changes yeah i i love that have have any of you been approached by law enforcement? Any feedback from that side of it? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no. Yeah, I could see that coming. You know, because yeah. because you've got they're kind of on the front line where where they're dealing with these type of cases. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be a benefit to them just having some light shed on it. Yeah, I mean, I think we're always up for furthering our conversations and, and who we're connecting with. Cause I think this is the way that we start enacting change, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, so where can we find she, if people listening, people watching, they want to watch it, where can they find it? So we were lucky to uh, be acquired by Gravitas Ventures in December yep. and they released it in December 27th. So as of right now, it's available on, Pretty much any of the VOD platforms, um, Apple, Amazon, Google, Vudu, um, and through most of the major cable networks that offer video on demand. Yeah, yeah, it's um, pretty, also... uh, pretty great. It's 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 such a great time, I think, as far as entertainment goes, because there's so many platforms out there. You know, where 20, 30 years ago, it might have been more difficult to get this type of project seen, but now. You've got all these avenues, and I think that's a, that's such a great uh, a great thing that you can get it released that way. Have you got to play it at any theaters? We've done two two screenings at our local theater here. Um, that was our that was that was our our only theater. That's exciting, of, uh, though. Yeah. Did, did you did you did you red carpet it? We, we did. did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And like it was, it was great. He's like we were able to um, also bring in the DNA Doe Project, who's been yeah. working on on cases, and give them a space and platform to talk about their work. So I think any moment in which we can like lift up other creators and and activists who are working in this space is is what what works best. Yeah. I love that. I was hoping that you took the time to, I mean, when you make a project, you need to celebrate. Yeah. I mean, you, you it was that. great. Cause like it, like it took place in like this historic vaudeville theater that is gorgeous. Nice. And like my dad used to go to that theater when he was a kid. Oh, like, wow. so I'm like just sitting there like, <laughs> like this is, we have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, mm -hmm. Jason, Vanessa, how was it? you know, seeing what you have been working on up on the big screen. It was, for, for me, it was, it was really interesting because I'd worked on it for so long and the premiere was actually the first night I saw the movie. You wow. know, I'm, I'm editing it. We're watching it. We're reviewing it and never make it through an entire screening, you know, like, Oh, I want to change this. Oh, I see this. and I want to do, you know, so I didn't really get to, to watch it until that night. So it was really, it was really, for me, it was a very, you know, good experience just to, just to see, see it from start to finish and, and the reaction of everybody that was right. there. I which... had seen it. Cause I, I was able to focus a little bit more on it than Jason. Cause he's always looking for something to yeah, fix. He was in it. I, I guess. it. Um, <laughs> but I was able to actually sit and watch the audience member, which members, which I think I, I watched more than the film that night, just because there was parts where Amy says something and then like 
everybody's either like completely silent and then she'll say something else and there'll be a little giggle. And it was just like, it was just such a great experience to see um, like people reacting, I guess, to something that we made, so. Yeah, I think that's so great. Was it weird seeing yourself on screen, Amy? I hate <laughs> every moment of watching myself and hearing myself. Like, you know, through the editing process, Jason and Vanessa kept to like asking me to like watch the film. And I, like, I just like could not. Yeah. So like, I actually had to enlist my husband to like make me <laughs> do it. Um, but then like, then seeing like my face on this giant screen and like hearing my voice and surround sound, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So it's it's like both like amazing and terrifying and like, yeah. I picked yeah. apart like everything I said the entire time. I'm like, oh, I should I should have said this this way. <laughs> I get yeah. a little of that because even just on a a, a podcast screen, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a very West Virginia accent. It took me a while to to you know accept my voice and how I looked on camera that it takes some time to get it does yeah that. I can't even imagine what it would be like putting it up on a movie screen yeah like yeah I mean I, there's like I feel like there's like a few actors who like have said publicly they don't watch their own films after and I, like that was like the moment that I was like I understand you <laughs> like, I get it <laughs> <laughs> so what's What's next for you, Amy? What uh, what are you working on now? Are you continuing this line of poetry or, or are there other things? You're doing? Yeah, so um, interesting, like uh, legally, legally, I cannot say too much about what I'm working on, but I'm helping oh. write a true crime memoir oh. for someone whose story is like it's a woman whose story is like so like heartbreaking and amazing at once. So it's like really an honor to work with her to help tell her story. Um, and then Vanessa and I, mm -hmm. do you want me to say? Sure. Oh yeah. So Vanessa and I are hoping, <laughs> are hoping to take the framework of what we've been doing with Doe and she and like transform it into something else. So we're exploring like podcasting, Ooh. kind of using like the same framework um to i think it may it would make a great podcast yeah mm -hmm. you'll have to let me know i'll add you to my yeah. list of podcasts yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. exciting i think i think because that's that's the thing now especially mm -hmm. true crime is that's for podcasts that's kind of the thing right um, and and so like you know how can we continue to advocate for these women like yeah. and amplify their stories so neither of us want to like leave them behind in any way so yeah I love amy's, that. yeah amy's book doe has if there's 50 poems in the book and we were only able to touch on eight of them in the film um so there's there's many other cases that that are are there that that should also be shared a lot of other names to learn and a lot of other stories to hear yeah, I love that you're doing that. I hate that there's that many of them that need doing. But yeah, yeah. good for you for uh, for kind of shining that uh, that light on. Was it difficult narrowing that down to eight? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was difficult narrowing it down to, like in the book, there are about 60 women, a little over 60 women in the book, and it was difficult narrowing it down to them. Um, yeah. and like there are, are literally like in my, my computer is filled with like hundreds of stories, you know, there are thousands of stories that we haven't heard about. And so, you know, when it came to like talking about the ones for the film, it was even harder, like, which, which are the ones that we're, we're going to, to feature yeah. in this moment. Yeah. I would think that would be. I would have a difficult time with that. I'd end up with a book that was about 2,000 pages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Jason, what anything that you and Vanessa are working on outside of maybe, Vanessa, you doing this uh, podcast? We're working on uh, one, other, one other documentary film uh, right now. Actually, it's on, on Jackie Lee that scored She for us. We're working on a project with her right now about her her life and uh and then we've got a couple other other possible projects on the on the horizon 
Well, that's a good sign that your first documentary didn't scare you off from doing others. <laughs> We're not afraid. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are you still working on the photography side? Yes. Yeah, photography we've been doing for a long time and, and we'll probably continue doing it in some fashion for probably forever, but uh, it was a good... Well, the, the, the film stuff is still new and we like to eat, so... <laughs> We need to keep doing the photography. <laughs> well, at least they kind of go together. That's they the do. skills are, you know, transferable. So that's the skills exactly are transferable, good. and for both, we get to work together. So it's nice. That's that's really great. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's terrific. Well, thank you guys so much for taking a little time to talk about this. I think it's such an important subject, and I love how you did it. I, I just, I think it's such a, a neat story is really, it really does seem to me like it was just meant to be. And even though Amy was trying to avoid you for a while, you, you hung in there. You were persistent. <laughs> she tried and now she's stuck with us for the long haul. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so before, before we wrap up, um, let's, let's start with you, Amy, you know, are you on social media and where can we find you there? And where can we find out more about your works and your books? Ah, so um, I have a website, amybaker.com. Um, and I am on social media. So you can find me on Instagram, um, TikTok. I started to TikTok. You're very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing over there, but, but I am there. Um, and Are lightly, you dancing? I am not dancing. My students <laughs> ask me this all the time they're like are you going to dance and I'm like absolutely no and they're like nobody's going to watch you then and I'm like oh <laughs> thanks for the love all <laughs> but but um you know maybe next semester I'll ask them to teach me some some something trendy <laughs> for, for TikTok yeah so TikTok's I'm, a I'm, scary one it is so it is overwhelming yeah I have my hundred followers I could use some more I That's actually see. pretty good. <laughs> I, I mean, for, you know, speaking as a non-dancer, that's hundreds, not bad. I, yeah. It, we, we have, I don't, I don't know what's, what's trendy in the true crime, true crime space, but <laughs> I'll figure out something. I think you'll, um, you'll very soon that number is going to start spiking. <laughs> no um, so or, yeah, so I'm, I'm out there on social media. Yeah. Great, great. What, well, uh, Jason, Vanessa, same question. You know, where can we find you and your work on social media? Yeah, so uh, the she she has a Facebook page and Instagram page, and it has a newish TikTok as well, which is basically just trailers for the for the film at this point. Um, yeah. we've got that. Uh, we have the website. Uh, it will be soon changed to Birdie and Bean Films. Yes. Yes. So we are going to be changing that over so that we can include some of our other projects that we're yeah, working that's on. great yeah so soon that will be um changed over and then yeah and then for the she film official she.com uh, is our official website for the film which has links to all of the the vod platforms uh and we also have the birdie and bean uh dot com, uh, birdie and bean films com. yeah terrific yeah I, I love that do you have anything specific just to the photography side we have uh, GreerChiccarelliCreative.com. And uh, very nice. Yep. And then that's, we are all over social media too, as Greer Chickarelli Creative. So that is, we have a lot of social media accounts to manage. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of hats. <laughs> and there's we, no nice. time to learn no. a TikTok dance. <laughs> no, no, no time. No. I don't even, I can't even get past just cat videos on TikTok right now. So I need to, um, I, Amy says I need to let it learn me. But yeah. right now it That's thinks great. I only like cats and recipes that include pepperoni. So I'm not going to go with it. <laughs> you have to be very careful because if you pause too long on any video, that's right. all you get. Right. Yes. <sighs> Apparently I paused on pepperoni because that's happening. Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry, things. Vanessa. <laughs> I should have warned you. <laughs> pepperoni and cats. That's it. There's worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Definitely. Yeah, for a well, while. Thank you I guys got... so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. This, this has been great. And I hope at some point you'll stay in touch and maybe we can we can talk again and kind of kind of see how the documentary and your works have progressed. Love that. I'd love to. We'd love to. 
Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. So the documentary is called She and it is based on the uh, book of poetry, Doe uh, by Amy Baker. So do yourself a favor, support the documentary, but definitely check out Amy's uh, book that the documentary is uh, based on really well. I can't believe that that's the first time she's really sat down to write poetry. It's, she's really talented, really well done. And then put your sport support, if I can get the words out, uh, behind the documentary. I think it's such an important piece of work and it's definitely shining a light on uh, people that are underrepresented. So definitely um, do what you can to, uh, to support that. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. I always love to shine a light on uh, important projects that we come across. Absolutely love that. Um, all three of them were just amazing. So nice, so kind. It was just the best. I really enjoyed that. If you are watching or listening for the first time with us and you enjoyed it, said, hey, this guy's not great, but the material is pretty good and you want to support us, we would really appreciate the help. There's a couple easy ways to do that. If you're watching, the YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. All we ask is that you hit that subscribe button. I, I wish I didn't have to ask for that, but we use that. We take that number of subscribers, and that's how we can go and get, um, get guests, get uh, sponsors for the show. It really does help us out, and it's free. Just hit that subscribe button. If you're listening, wherever you're listening to your podcast at, subscribe there. That helps us as well. You can find, we posted uh, episode 510. Can't believe that. We've been doing this for four years. That's a ton of episodes, and we've loved every minute of it. But you can find all 510 and counting episodes on our website. You can get the audio and the video version, meistercon.com. You'll also be able to find out, you know, what we have going on. If we're in studio watching a documentary like She, that'll be on the website. If we're going uh, on location, if we're covering a convention, whatever we have going on, you'll be able to uh, find that on the website. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.